This, my friends, is my brand new Hot News PC that I put together specifically for compiling Hot News as well as doing some live streaming. And I originally conceived of this build back in July, but it's taken me a few months to come together with it because I had to make some mental sacrifices in order to bring it here. But now we have the Hot News PC. No thanks to the graphics card that's in here, which I'm gonna spend a good minute on. This thing bothered me more than any other PC part that I've ever purchased in my entire life. But we're gonna talk about all of that after we talk about today's video sponsor. It's supposed to fulfill a few different purposes. Number one, it's supposed to be my daily workhorse for getting all of hot news ready as I'm doing all that. And then number two, it's supposed to provide a streaming setup for me to be able to do game streams and all of that kind of stuff over on Twitch, which we actually built this PC live over on Twitch a few weeks ago. So be sure to follow me over there if you want more streams. They're coming, I promise. I'm working on it. But before we get into just the thorn in my flesh, which is this Zotac GPU right here, let's go over the rest of the spec list of the PC because some of it makes sense. Some of it was a little thrown together with parts that I had lying around as opposed to buying them. And I want to detail them for you here. And in fact, Gigabyte was a huge help in order for me to actually get this PC put together. They provided not only this new Oris Water Force X280 water cooler, which looks immaculate. It's part of their new water cooling line line of CPU AIOs that they're rolling out, which supports all of the main CPUs out there, including the brand new LGA 1700 socket. In addition to sending me the cooler, Gigabyte also sent me two 140 mil fans that are ARGB and kind of match what's going on with the X Water Force so that you can match the rest of your system with the CPU cooler fans that are actually included. However, I haven't been able to find them for sale anywhere besides eBay. And then they're like $45 a fan, like Newegg and Amazon don't stock these fans, which I'm thankful that Gigabyte sent them to me, but I wish that there was a way that a lot of other people could pick them up as well. But they also sent over 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3333 Oris RGB RAM, as well as the motherboard that we're using in this build, which is the X570S Aero G, which once you put them all together, actually looks really good. I'm actually thoroughly impressed with the design aesthetics that Gigabyte has going on with all of these different parts. I do wish, especially with how big this water block is, that this was an LCD screen as opposed to just the Oris logo, but it doesn't stand out too prominently. They didn't put words on there, so it's not such a big deal. For the CPU, which is under this Oris Water Force X, is the Ryzen 7 4750G. This is a CPU that I've had for well over a year at this point, and has been kind of hopping from build to build just because it's one that I'm not putting in my main edit rig because the eight cores and 16 threads, while they're great for a lot of different stuff, they're not as powerful as something like my i9-10900K, which I'm putting in my main editing rig. So I like the 4750G, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go out and buy that for a build that in case you're going to try to replicate this because it's $330 right now. You'd be better off getting something like the Ryzen 5 5600X, which speaking of the parts that I'm putting in this build, I just launched our brand new website ufd.deals where I give you the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet but there's also a section on that website which includes all of the PC builds that I'm going to be doing from now on so you can see all of the parts you can see their price list as well as what I paid for them and it's going to be a nice little place for me to put all of the PC builds that we're going to be doing from this point forward. The case for this build is the Montec Air 1000 Lite which hasn't officially launched yet and actually has been coming out to like middling reviews due to some air flow issues that are going on. Uh, it, it's named error, but it's basically error in name only. It's not the worst thing we've seen. Honestly, I'll get to the performance numbers in a second, but it's mostly fine for my purposes. The 4750G, not a hot CPU, not something that requires a ton of airflow in the RTX 3060 that's in here. Again, just kind of a mid-tier run-of-the-mill system. The airflow on the Air 1000 Lite was perfectly fine for me. It's gonna be going for $70, which honestly isn't a terrible price. What wasn't a terrible price, in fact, was a phenomenal price, is the power supply we got in here. It's the EVGA Supernova 650GT. I picked this thing up up for $50. It's such a good price for an 80 plus gold, 650 watt power supply, solid deal there. And on that, I have these cable extensions. They're the up here pink and blue cable extensions, which brings me right around to the GPU because all of this was supposed to be aesthetically coordinated. I was supposed to have the LEDs match up with the cable extensions that are in here, which was going to match the GPU that's in this build. And if you don't look at it too closely, everything's totally 
perfectly fine. But this RTX 3060 from Zotac, which you likely won't be able to find very much anywhere because the place that I purchased it, which was on Newegg, actually doesn't sell it anymore. And as far as I'm aware, this was a China exclusive release that doesn't seem to be popping up on a ton of retailers. And even if it does, or if it was still on Newegg, like when I purchased it, you're not going to want to spend the $890 that I spent on this GPU. Why would I pay that price? Well, because of the aesthetics, mostly. Obviously, I can hear a lot of you saying, hey, Brett, you could have just purchased a GPU and painted it, to which I say that's true, but I also bought this back at like the height of GPU pricing where RTX 3060s were going for between like eight and nine hundred dollars. It was absurd. But the price obviously tickles my gherkin a little bit. Like I'm just very upset about that. But then on top of that, the coloring is really what bothered me. When I saw this on Newegg's website to purchase it, it looked like it matched hot news colors exactly. You got the hot pink, you got the teal, everything looks really good. And even now, as I look at the product listing, it doesn't look all that bad. The box art kind of shows that it's hot pink and some teal on there. But then when you look at the back of the box, it looks green. And then when you look at the card in person, it's partly green. In fact, it's largely green. That's a seafoam green that we have on here, which I guess Zotac's product images don't clearly convey. I've looked at this on a bunch of different devices, on a bunch of different monitors, and they all look nearly identical to me. They do not look seafoam green like this thing appears in person, which I know gets into like first world problems. Aesthetics don't really matter that much. And I hear you if it weren't for the fact that I paid too much for this card during a huge shortage when I didn't have very many options and I just wanted something that would go cohesively together. And when I bought this card and it arrived on my doorstep, I took it out of the box and I sad, I big sad because I did not have the ability to wrap everything together the way I wanted. Once I got the GPU and realized that it was seafoam green, I gave up. The cable combs now don't match like I thought they would have based on the product images that I saw. And I bought this thing from freaking Hong Kong, so there's no returning it. I spent $90 on shipping to get this thing straight to my door. And now I just had to wallow in the sadness of the fact that I had to put together a PC that couldn't be perfectly coordinated like I wanted it to. And honestly, the better solution from the get-go would have been to just buy a white GPU or even a black GPU and paint over it and make my own design, but I'm not usually artistically inclined, so I didn't think of that first. And now that I have this here, I'm a little bummed out that this is the route that I chose to go. And I now have some hindsight behind me to realize that I should have never gotten this card in the first place. Have I ranted enough? about this RTX 3060, the X Gaming GOC from Zotac. They have bothered me twice in the recent history with their GPUs. You got this pink and blue one that has a little bit of green thrown in, but then their RTX cards that are their Arctic or white ones. I did a PC build of this recently and the buttons on the GPU look urine colored. It's awful. It just like Zotac gets so close and then misses the mark by like this much. And when you're trying to put together a build that's supposed to have have a cohesive theme and then it's this much off it bothers you a lot more than that because you got so close you tried so hard but in the end it doesn't even matter and then rounding out the rest of the build we have my aver media live gamer duo capture card that i've had for over a year at this point this was before elgato came out with their quad capture card this one does two hdmi ins so that i can have either a console and my pc running to it or put like my camera and the gaming pc i don't necessarily have to just be stuck to one device with this but let's talk about the benchmarks on this thing for a second because it is a 4750g with an rtx 3060 and it performs pretty decently playing games at 1080p high just some games that i'm replaying currently we've got the witcher 3 and horizon zero dawn which now has their dlss update on pc which actually made it perform really great averaging over 100 fps in both of those games and then just quickly testing it out in fortnite which is a game that i like to play with with my kids and also again they're averaged over 100 fps and during all the gaming sessions that i had the water force x 280 worked perfectly fine it's a 4750g it was never going to get out of hand it's 60 degrees celsius on the cpu the entire time the gpu averaged right around 65 during gaming sessions which i guess the triple fan setup on this x gaming card from zotac helped to keep that cool as well but i now sit in disappointment in a pc that 
I thought was gonna come together a lot better than it ended up doing. I mean, honestly, it doesn't look too bad, the RGB on Gigabyte's products from the RAM to the cooler and the RGB fans that they gave me kind of help align it a little bit, but just the seafoam green that's on this GPU just takes it down a huge notch for me and bothers me a whole lot. So I honestly just made this video to complain about the fact that I bought a GPU that didn't end up working out the way that I thought it was going to. But let me know down in the comments, what's the worst PC part that you've purchased aesthetically that you thought was gonna work, but then didn't end up working? Very specific conversation piece right there, but let me know down below in the comments. With that being said, I'm Brett with UFD Tech. We'll be back with another episode of Hot News tomorrow. Don't forget to check out our new UFD Deals website, which provides you with the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet, as well as a conglomerated list of all the PC builds that we'll have forthcoming on the channel. See you tomorrow, my friends. Cheers.